everyone, and welcome back to the Dream Life Loading Podcast, Season 2, Episode 17. I'm your co-host, Sky, And I'm your co-host, Susan. How are you today, Sky? I am pretty tired today, Susan. I'll be honest. I think you and I went to bed at the same time, which <laughs> it does It does tend to happen um, sometimes, but I definitely had a little extra fun on our Sunday fun day, um, and I am I'm paying for it today, but, you know, we're surviving. I got to have a I'm grateful that I was able to have like a really relaxed day today and um we got to watch the Grammys this morning because even though I was up until 2 30 in the morning it was not late enough to watch the Grammys live so we watch it today so I'm I'm hanging in there I'm I'm feeling better now than I was a couple hours ago but <laughs> I'm doing good. <laughs> how are you I am so good we had kind of a busy weekend I think I'm fighting off like a cold or something so I'm just trying to hydrate and hang out and I started my morning watching the Grammys so why don't we just jump right into that because it was so I haven't finished it but I we I've watched enough that we can discuss I we're gonna leave out the end because you haven't seen it and I'm assuming you have not gone on social media so you don't no. you have, okay very good I did the same thing I was like I'm not gonna go on social media like which I was was such a cool way to do it because it almost felt like I was watching it live because I really did yes. have no idea what was coming but Oh my God, I think this was my favorite Grammys ever. The performances were amazing. All the artists nominated were amazing. Like it was, I feel like you watch it some years and it's like, I know the, the two people that have been nominated, but the other six, mm -hmm. the other whatever, like I've never heard of these people. So much talent in the past year. Yeah. Crazy. And it's, it obviously Taylor had like, she didn't, I don't think she dominated as much this year as she has in past years and I honestly yeah. kind of liked that like being yeah. such a huge Taylor Swift fan I obviously love it the years that she like sweeps the award shows but it was nice that there was other people that got to shine as well yeah. like, we have to talk about Miley Cyrus yes 1000% and honestly with how the Brad's Chad's and dad's of the world have been receptive to Taylor or lack thereof I think that it was probably nice for her to like win that really special one walk mm -hmm. away with it and just like have her moment but not be like the center of it I think she honestly probably appreciated that a little bit I think so too I think it I don't want to give anything away for you so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it to myself but yes it was it was nice to see other people that were so deserving like it wasn't like oh Taylor should have won this one but like they gave it to this person yeah. instead like I genuinely think like when Miley Cyrus won, that was insane. And yes. When Billy won her speech with her brother, that was, they were so humble. They were so appreciative. And it was just yeah. so nice to see, like really humble, yeah. really appreciative people. Yes, 1000%. And there were, I don't think there was a single one where I was like, oh, that should have gone to someone else. Like I it was genuinely like, this is a really tough category. Like even the one, the only one that I was kind of like torn with was it was country something yeah. and it was between like Kelsey and Lainey and then like a handful of other really talented people. And I loved Kelsey's EP of rolling up the welcome mat, but it was the original one. And I, I agree. I think Lainey deserved that award based off of that. I think the EP that Kelsey put out that was like extended. Mm -hmm. I think that would have won it, but because it was the original one, I think that it was a fair shake. I, this is probably terrible, but I didn't know who Lainey, Lainey Wilson. Yeah. I have never heard of her. Oh, I, Chris and I went on a Lainey Wilson kick this summer and we listened to like all of her music. We so love I, Lainey. I was really rooting for Kelsey to win that one just because yeah. she's been through so much in the past year. And like that EP was so revolutionary for her as an artist, but I think also mm -hmm. for the industry. So I was, I was really rooting. That was the one for me that I was like, yeah but and the the new artist of the year i would have loved to see noah khan but there were so many in that yeah category. so again it's like so much talent but it was a good it was a good award show for sure it was I, honestly my favorite moment of the entire thing was miley's performance which is so fitting because i pulled a quote from her little monologue before she sang and it said numbers may excite me but they do not define me which is so fitting because we're talking about content creation today and you yes. can get so easily wrapped up mm -hmm. in the numbers that are followers, likes, comments, and all the things. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. And I honestly, I 
you have given me so much amazing advice over the past couple of years with content creation and trying to build a brand. And the number one thing you've always said to me is like, do not focus on how many followers you have. Like, don't do like X, Y, and Z all relating to like, it doesn't matter what the numbers are. Like if you stay consistent, mm -hmm. like you will watch it flourish. Like it's going to happen. And I think that happens too with, if you do have one video that goes crazy viral and you're like, oh great. Like I, I I'm there, I made it. Like I have my brand, like I'm good. And you think that the number, like it's, I feel like it's, it's a double-edged sword. Cause you look at it and you're like, oh, I wish this video had more views, but maybe that's a video that's actually closely related to your brand and will help you in the long run versus the one viral video that isn't related mm -hmm. to anything and actually might hurt you more. So looking at the numbers, that's like the number one thing that like you taught me and that I really hang on to is that like, it really like, obviously, yes, there's a part of it that it does matter, but it's not something you can focus on. No, the, I now my full time job is content strategy and customer experience analyst. So I a big part of my job is looking at the numbers and analyzing why and how our numbers are the way they are. But I can tell you on a day to day basis, the only thing I'm looking at every single day and a number that I'm counting on is revenue. Yeah, I'm not looking at, you know, I do. I pay attention to our subscribers and that sort of thing. But that's not what I'm hanging my hat on at the end of the day. Yep. No, for sure. I think I, I, I remember when you first started, because I remember I'm thinking back to the summer before I moved to Italy. So what would that have been? 22. Uh, August 22, then like July, mm -hmm. 20, whatever that was. And I remember I said to you, I was like, look, like, I'm, I'm about to go through this like huge transition. Like, I think that this would be really cool to document. And like, that's when I, like, I came to you and I was like, I want to start doing this. And you had the year before you had blown up or was it that summer? So I had actually, I wrote this out because I had oh. a hard time remembering too. I started content creating with a blog and Instagram in 2019. Wow. And then in 2021 was when I started TikTok. Um, in my first year, I made it to 30K followers and I was just posting trends in my books. That was my primary focus on there was to promote the books that I wrote. And then in 2022, my content shifted because then I was a teacher. So I had teacher content um, and I sat around 60K for that year. Mm -hmm. So I stopped teaching in June of 2022. July of 2022 was when I went viral. And that's when my account hit over 300,000 yep. with um, my Change Your Life in 100 Days Challenge. Mm -hmm. So it would have been 2022. So I, I probably turned to you for a lot of reasons, but one of them being that you were... I mean, like uh, you were doing what I was hoping to do. Like you were actively yeah. doing what I was like trying to do as well. And I think the reason there's so many reasons why I believe it worked for you. But I think the main reason was that you went viral with a video that was related to your brand. And that's like the mm -hmm. magic blend you want, you yeah. want the video to reach a huge audience, but you want it to be a video that's going to bring people back to your account. And mm -hmm. I think that's like the hardest thing to do is you can have one video and this is, we're talking TikTok specifically here. I think like, yes, that's definitely the one that we're both most, fam most familiar with and most comfortable. So it's the easiest for us to talk about, but you can have a video do well, but then how do you get people back to your channel so that you're actually creating a brand and not just having a few videos that go viral for no reason. So right. in that challenge, you had day one, what was it? Over 5 million views. Yeah. And then people were like, okay, that was day one. And you have people coming back for 99 more days. And that created, yeah. what was it? Like 315,000 people. It yeah. Incredible. But that was like, you figured out the formula that was like, I can figure out how to attract an audience, but then keep the audience engaged and coming back, which is like, that's the yeah. key. I remember that day so vividly. We, I had posted that TikTok during my lunch break. And then that afternoon I drove, my friend and I drove down to see one of my other friends and we got ice cream and I like checked it. And I was like, oh my God, guys, like my TikTok, I just grew like 30,000 people. And then I got home and Chris and I laid on our couches in like across the room from each other, both refreshing and refreshing. Oh. And Chris was like, you was like a hundred K. And we like, lost it like we had so much fun and then for me to wake up the next morning and I the video was over 1 million views which was at 100k views when I went to sleep 
it, I was over a million views and I had, I don't know, I was over 200,000 followers overnight, but wow. it wasn't overnight because wow. I'd been consistent with it for two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Almost three years at that point. Yep. Um, but it was wild. It's I was that, um, that week I actually ranked in the fastest, I was number one for the fastest growing TikTokers. I remember that. Yeah. Wow. This yeah. is bringing back so, so many memories from that summer. Cause I, I remember you like sent me the video of the person who posts like the, the stats for week to week. And it was like, yes. oh, God, it's, it's Susan Aubin. Like she's number one. <laughs> so it's, it's amazing. But I think one thing that I have learned over like the past couple months, cause I, I mean, to call myself an influencer like that, it feels silly, but you've always said like, you, you are right. You had, even though it's like, you don't, I might not have like at X amount of followers, whatever. Like if you are creating a brand and you are influencing people to do something like you have to call yourself what you want to be. So the one thing I, I mean, I've learned a lot of things, but I think I look at my videos from a year ago and I love that TikTok does like what you posted. Like it shows yeah. like one year ago today or two years ago today, whatever. And I see my videos from a year ago and I think I've gotten a lot more comfortable with filming and editing and figuring out like a style mm -hmm. that works for me. So that's cool to see. But I also am realizing my issue a year ago was I was so inconsistent and not just inconsistent in the amount I was posting. Like, I think you have to be consistent and you can decide for your brand, like how much you're willing to like put into it. Like if you can post multiple times a day, like obviously you're going to grow faster. Like that's amazing. But even last year I was posting like maybe once a week, maybe twice a week, maybe sometimes five times a week, another time once, like very inconsistent in the posting, which does not help if you're trying to grow an audience. But then it was right. also very inconsistent in the types of videos that I was posting. I would maybe sometimes have like a morning routine vlog. And sometimes I'd have like a trends video. And sometimes it would be like a day in the life or like a cooking with me. And it was just all over the place. And it was never, I never figured out my niche. And I think that was my problem is I was just randomly posting videos and honestly, looking back, probably trying to see what stuck. And it's, yeah. it, I mean, it was, I think it was a learning process, but it was obviously frustrating too, that I'm posting. I'm like, well, like I like watching morning routine videos. So why isn't mine doing well? And it was like, you're trying to figure it out, but like, what is my niche? Okay. My niche is that I'm an American living in Italy. Like, that's cool. Like, why was I not focusing on that? <laughs> like, it really makes a lot of sense looking back that now I've started to gain a following from what makes me unique. And every single person has something that makes them unique. And you just have to stop and think, okay, what is it about me that not everyone else can do? Or even if everyone else can do it, what can I do better? Like, how can I right. like, and I think that's, like we look at some influencers that just sit in their house all day and work from home and like do pretty mundane things, but they have these insane followings because they make it so aesthetic or they talk to the camera like it's their best friend. Like look at Alex Earl, how many people do makeup, like get ready with me videos and she blew up because she's so personal and she's so, she wants to be your best friend. She really makes you feel comfortable. So I think you have to figure out your niche and stay consistent at least at the start for me, I think that was really helpful is like give people something that they can rely on coming back to. Yes, exactly. It's the consist consistency of it all. And I think that that is, I mean, if you look at breakdowns of why people like Alex Earl are so um, successful and Emily yes. Kaiser, Kaiser. Um, same thing. She's giving you consistency. She's getting ready every day. She's going to run errands and go to swig. And then she's going to do an OOTD with Trig. like yep. you're gonna get the same things and that's why because I've spent hours I will just scroll her page and like catch up with her life it's like okay I'm watching the same thing over and over again why is this so yes. addicting mm -hmm. it's because she does it well and she figured it out and who knows like maybe they don't want to be doing the same thing over and over again but it's paying the bills right so and I think, I think no keep going I was just gonna say that Content creation creates new opportunities for your financial and career growth. And I think that that's, I mean, I've literally leveraged it to be, be in a position at my job that didn't exist before I got there. Like you can, it's you, people don't like the term influencer. They say, oh, I don't like, I don't want that for whatever bad rep, mm -hmm. but you can use it for good and to, you know, better or benefit your life. 
Absolutely. And I think you, I don't think a year, two years ago when your account blew up, if you would have thought that you would be able to use a TikTok video that blew up, which obviously became more than just a TikTok video, but use that in order to create this, like mon this job that then provides for yeah. you financially, which is really cool. But I think also you could use TikTok, like look at Emily, for example, who she didn't go and then take one job and turn it into something else. She took TikTok and made that her job, which is yeah. so impressive. Yes. Like, and especially like Alex Earl and Avery Woods. I, I know there's so much controversy with her, but I think she is so funny. I th I love her videos, but all of these girls that they have turned this industry of posting videos on TikTok into like a really successful business, which yeah. looks like from the outside, from the outside looking in, it's like, okay, well, that's like, I want to do that. Like, that's so cool, but it takes so much work. And I think, I mean, I probably mm -hmm. know not even the half of it, but like the other thing is like, is owning it. Cause people will make fun of you. I remember the first, yeah. after my account blew up the first couple weeks after we would go out and like, people would pick on me and I'd be like, well, my TikTok's paying for my, we're out to eat. I'd be like, well, TikTok's paying for my meal right now. So you guys can make fun of me, but mm -hmm. it is bringing in passive income. And it's not that you have to have something to show for it, mm -hmm. but don't let people crap on your dreams just because they aren't doing it. The only people who are going to make fun of you are people who are jealous or not brave enough to do what you're doing. And they want to be. Mm -hmm. I, I, I actually wasn't going to like bring up this example, but that made me think of it. And you brought this up the other day too. I had made how many little Snapchat hauls of like how any, many and every purchase that I would make. And it started in like probably 2020 with COVID is like the only way to cope with what was going on was to online shop. <laughs> so I would have something show up in my house probably like every other day, I'll be completely transparent. And I would make a haul every single time and just send it to like my friends on Snapchat. And it got to the point where mm -hmm. like, it was kind of half a joke, but I think like a lot of my friends were like, I'm waiting for the next haul. Like it became a thing. And yeah. I remember both my parents were like, why aren't you putting these on the internet? Like you like to watch hauls. Like you like to watch this content. Why are you not? Mm -hmm. putting and it was a full fear of being made fun of. Like it was so mm -hmm. such a lack of confidence. And it's so silly looking back. Like if I had started just not even changing anything that I was doing, like just putting the videos I was already making up on the internet, where could I be now? So it's just like, we hold ourselves back so much for no reason. It took my high school students two days before they found my TikTok. Obviously I'm not broadcasting it, but I had already created a following and I had decided before the school year started, I was like, I'm not going to hinder my opportunities for financial growth mm -hmm. by making my account private at this point, because yeah. I did work for, you know, the last two years to build my platform. And, um, so then it was like, it was the first week. It might've been two days, maybe three. That's a little generous, but within the first week, my high schoolers had found my TikTok. So they all followed me or whatever. And they were talking about it. And I remember one of my coworkers who shall name remain nameless <laughs> reported me for showing my tiktoks on my smart board which absolutely did not happen i was mortified that they even found it in the first place um and so my principal came down and he was so so nice about it he was like hey you're not like showing your tiktoks on your smart board right and i was like absolutely not like what and he's like yeah i didn't think so he's like but i just had to follow up with that <laughs> um and he's like well you got me to download the app. I just follow you so I could see it. I was like, oh, that is so sweet. Um, but it showed my kid, like they're ruthless, by the way. Like I would post a TikTok and sometimes they would come in and just absolutely roast me. But that pump that was probably the best way for me to get over being afraid of posting. I was like, okay, I'm gonna let a 14 year old like ruin my self-esteem over this. Like, absolutely not. Um, so shout out to the high schoolers who were either nice or mean to me about my TikTok because it just made me better because it yeah. I persevered. Yes, I you have to grow a thicker skin. And I think we experienced a little bit of that last summer too. And I think it comes with if you're if you're gaining a following, not everybody is gonna love what you're doing. Like that's just the no. reality of it. And I think we experienced that a little bit 
this summer with the dream life summer challenge is that we got some mm -hmm. pushback and people people like can sit behind a faceless account and say the worst things about like our character as people and it's just mm -hmm. i remember i remember the day so specifically that we were getting all these comments and we were both so upset and it's just you have to build that thicker skin and i think for my personal channel I am really grateful that I moved to a different country because I think that took away a lot of the like feeling self-conscious about it, like those emotions, because I could post my video and then at least back then, like no one around me was really watching them. So it made mm -hmm. it easier versus like in college, if I posted a video, like all my friends would see it. And like, you want your friends to be supportive, but if you have friends that probably you shouldn't be friends with if they're not supporting you, but even like, people in your day to day life, it's you have to kind of like, be ready for people to acknowledge it. And I think I had to grow that thicker skin a little bit. But once you do, and you push through, and continue doing like what you love to do. And it's like, I know we've talked about being able to turn content creation into something that makes you money, like you mentioned a few times, but you didn't start doing this to make money. That was never the goal. No. I like we're I I want to like, capture these moments. Like I want to be able to look back on this experience and have these daily vlogs and remember exactly what we're doing. But when you're into it and you're doing what you love because you love it, people will get over whatever they are trying to make fun of you for and they'll support it. Like that's really, that's what I learned. And that's what I experienced. Mm -hmm. I remember as I started posting more and more, even last year when I wasn't getting like barely any views at all, I got people from high school, from college, even people that I like didn't really know that are like, I love that you're doing this. Like I, I'm supporting you. Like I followed you. Like people respond well to like you, wh what's the word I'm looking for? Like if you put yourself out there and show like, I don't care what other people think, like I love doing this. N like most people are going to be really supportive of that. Like people want to yeah. be supportive. I think like at the end of the day, people want to support you. And even if it's for selfish reasons of them being like, oh, well, I know a really famous TikToker yes. or whatever, whatever, support is support, take it where you can get it. And the confidence, like if you have confidence in what you're doing, then it, it takes away the power from people that are going to try and put you down. Like in your example, yeah. you had confidence to show up to work every day and let these high schoolers rip you apart, which high schoolers are mean. So them ripping you <laughs> they apart, are so mean. Cool. Um, but then you also on the flip side of that, I went to a wedding last summer. Yeah. And I'm dancing, hanging out, like having a good time. Mind you, I was a plus one to this wedding. I did not know a single person there. And these girls came up to me and they're like, are you Susan? Like Susan Aubin? And I was like, well, it's Ash now, but yes. And they're like, we have followed you on TikTok for so long. And it was just one of those surreal moments. Like, okay, like I am influencing or making an impact in some way because these girls who I do not know want to be my friend now. Like- <laughs> It, I had a, I've had a, some, a few similar experiences this season, especially, and it's been mm -hmm. so bizarre. Cause like, I, it, it's so funny. Cause I'm like, oh, why would people know who I am? But literally we were at, I don't think I told you this when we went to lunch in the mountains last weekend, our waitress like came over and she was talking and, and we were speaking in English and she was like, oh, where are you from? And we told her and she was like, oh my God, do you post on TikTok? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I do. And she was like, you're from like, from Murano, she because I had said we were living in Murano, whatever. And she was like, I follow your TikToks. It's like, oh my God, thank you so much. That's and so it was fun. the coolest thing ever. But it's like, if you don't have the confidence and the desire and the commitment to do it, like mm -hmm. they won't happen. But people like people are so receptive of like that attitude, like the bubbly, confident attitude on the internet. Like that's yeah. it's not a bad thing. Like let people make fun yeah. of you, whatever, but like most people are going to be not not jealous isn't the right word but they're going to latch on to people that have confidence like i think i never would have started doing this if it weren't for seeing your confidence with doing it it was like i don't care what other people think like look how happy and confident susan is like i can do that like i can ha i can have that confidence but i had to see you as my example i remember the day that i felt like free with my content it was the day after my teaching contract was done mm -hmm. and I was like I can post whatever I want because like yes I was still very mindful of what I was posting as a teacher yes. because I knew I was treating my TikTok as if I was sending every single thing I posted 
directly to my students inbox because I knew that so many of them were following me. Um, but the day that I was no longer a teacher, I was like, I can post obviously still within reason, still appropriate because I still know that these children at the time were following me, but I was so much, I was, I was free. So like, I remember I was wearing turquoise shorts and a black shirt to the gym. And I was just like, this is it. Like, I feel so free in my life. And that's when I started gravitating and pulling in people too. So like, if your content's, I don't want to use the word flopping because you, if you're posting content, you're being successful. But if you're not seeing the, let's say results that you want to see with your content, make sure it's authentic. Because if you're just doing a trend or you're just putting on a face and you're just trying to get it done for the sake of getting it done, it's not going to produce the results you want. Yes. Oh, that, that's what I was trying to grasp. What I was, what I, with what I was saying <laughs> earlier is the authenticity of what I didn't have last year versus to what I hope I, and what I feel like I have now that's what people want to follow. And that's why we love the Emily's and the Avery's and like all of these influencers mm -hmm. that we've been watching for, like Alex Earl is the number one example of authenticity. That's what you're gonna yeah. gravitate towards. Like you want to get on the internet and tune into someone that's like, okay, this is them being themselves versus if you're trying to make your morning routine look different than it is, or like make it more, make it anything different than what it is, that's where like if it works for a few videos, like good for you. Cause I haven't seen it work, but it's not going to last. Like the, no. and I literally wrote down, I said, be yourself. And like, would you want to be watching your content? And the reality is like, ask yourself yeah. that question. And like, I can assume your answer is going to be, you want to watch what's authentic. Absolutely. I love that. That's so important. Authentic. I feel like to sum up what we said, authenticity, consistency, and <sighs> numbers don't matter yep unless it's money <laughs> <laughs> yes but that's only gonna ever be positive you're not gonna ever like lose money by putting content out there which is nice it's like it's only gonna win win yep something else before we switch over to favorites i just recently watched chris kardashian's master class on personal branding, so much good information. Some of it was information that I think I either learned from you or learned just from like experience of like trial mm -hmm. online and whatever, but she has so many interesting tidbits and advice and just hearing her story of how they took their family and turned them into like this internationally known brand, whether you like the yeah. Kardashians, I know we've talked about the Kardashians kind of a lot here, but I think it's because- We love them. We do. And I think whether you like them as people or not, you have to realize what incredible business people they are. Like, And yes. so she talks a lot about that in the masterclass. So honestly, if you don't like the Kardashians, give her masterclass a, a try because it really opened my eyes to a lot of like the mastermind that's behind- creating that, which is just, yeah, takes a lot of hard work. Like I'm, you could look at them and think that they don't work at all, but those are like probably some of the hardest working people out there. At least, I don't know. I think they still are, especially Kim right now, but especially when they were starting out, like it was a grind to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely started above the start line for most, yes. like the general population, but they still, they could have lived at that baseline and they yep. chose to live up here so I think that's that's another thing to take away from this is like if you focus on this is with goals as a whole but if you focus on I want a hundred thousand followers and then you get there and then now what I think that's something that mm -hmm. kind of proved too is like Chris and Kim and the whole family have this dynamic of it's never enough which I'm sure can be toxic in some situations but if you don't have that attitude of always pushing to do better mm -hmm. and better and better you're not going to do better. Like you have to always want more, especially yeah. in a world where like, I mean, look at what's happening with TikTok right now. And like things are always changing and adapting and you have to be on it and growing and like having the desire to continue to push and like let yourself fail because it's going to push you in a direction of success. Absolutely. Favorites? Yes. What is your favorite of the week? My favorite of the week is my new red bag and it's, it's so pretty. Thank you. It's, this is, I, I don't even, I think I did talk about 
wanting a red bag back. I know I've talked about it. I think I did yes. the show as well. Back in like September, I have been on the hunt for a Italian leather red bag and I shopped and shopped and shopped and just could not find the perfect one. And I had never forgotten about it, but I kind of stopped looking because there came a point where it was like, I'm going to drive myself and Nick crazy if I just <laughs> you on the hunt. Um, so I'd kind of like put it on the back burner and we were in town a couple weeks ago and I saw it in the window of a store and it was like that movie moment where like I looked at it, I was like, that's it. I knew it before I saw it. We'd go into the store, the price is right. Like it was, oh, it smelled like good leather and the color's perfect. Like everything about it, I was like, this is it. But I wouldn't let myself buy it because it was like, it's the end of the month. Like I have to stick to my budget. Like I have to be good. I have to do this for myself. And mm -hmm. I really, I had this plan. I was like, okay, like I'll, I'll go in February. Like I'll get it. It'll be like a Valentine's day present to myself, whatever. And then I was doing laundry. Is this just the beginning of this week or no, it's Monday. It, it was, was last week. Um, I was doing laundry and I turn around and I have like a shelf with all my bags and there she is. And it was a surprise from Nick. And I was like, I never, I'm so weird at accepting gifts. Like I'm so grateful for it, but I always feel that guilt part that I'm like, oh my God, you did not have to do this. Like I never wanted, yeah. to, like you had to buy this for me. And he's like, no, like I wanted to do this for you. Like, so he had, he had been waiting for me to find the right bag. Cause he wanted to do this for me. So it was, it meant a lot to me, but I think it also meant a lot to him to be able to do that for me. So, and it's, it's so perfect. Like I'm so happy with it. I love that. It's a good bag. Thank you. She's, she's, <laughs> she's special. She needs a <laughs> <laughs> um my favorite for the week was the book ask for andrea because i devoured it i started it at like 3 p.m on friday and i got up early saturday and i finished it in bed mm -hmm. um and it was just oh it was so good it had me sucked in from the very first sentence and there was no going back and it was just nice to get kind of like sucked into reading like that because now i'm excited and I'm ready to go on a reading grind this you recommended it to me and it was perfect timing because I had just finished the other book we were reading at the same time yeah. it's like okay that was fine but like I need a book that's gonna suck me in and I'm 50% through like it's I've yeah. just started reading it and you don't want to put it down it's it's a it's a it's a different type of thriller than Frida which I think is good for us because we get into yes. Frida habit but oh my god it's so good ask for Andrea everybody should read it which Frida has a new book coming out this week. Yes. Oh my God. Very good. I know it. I'll be so excited. <laughs> um, All right. Your quote. My quote is I see a certain life for myself and I won't stop until I get it. And I think mm -hmm. that is the perfect quote for this content creation. All things episode is if like, what do you, and it's, it is the dream life floating motto in so many ways. Like what life do you see for yourself? And now like, if, if you can see it, you can do it. I think that's like the first step is like visualizing what you want with anything, whether it's content, like it doesn't have to just be yeah. for this specifically, but like if you have the power to visualize and dream up what you want, then it's attainable. Like if you can dream it, you can be it. Absolutely. I love that. My quote is your home should tell this, tell your story and be a collection of things you love. Oh, I like that. And I like that. I don't know. I, we sold a um, bed yesterday and now the baby's room just has like the queen size bed for Chris or I, depending on who's sleeping up there. Yep. Um, and then like all of her, well, I say all of her stuff. She doesn't have much stuff, but like the stuff we have. Um, and I was like, oh, like now there's space. Like we can actually start on this. Um, and my bedroom is another space in our house that I really never used, but we got a new bed and I like the end of the day I will go down I make the bed in the afternoon because Chris is never up at an appropriate hour <laughs> um so I know I get up ungodly early but so I will make the bed in the afternoon and then I just sit and I read in my bed and just enjoy our bedroom which we're about to redo but I'm just I'm very cozy and comfy That's... in different parts of my home that is kind of refreshing very that's I am never like a read in bed in the middle of the day person. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I can't do it. I don't know why, but I love, I would in college. So it's, I think it just depends on your environment, but I love that you're finding like new spaces in your home and like yes. new ways to enjoy all the different spaces. 
And I'm laughing because it is so dark there. I can I like just see your face. <laughs> I realized it, it, it's so funny when we recorded this time because when we started the episode 30 minutes ago, daylight, yeah, beautiful, <laughs> best lighting of the day. And then I was like, I can't get up and like turn a light on. So if you're watching on YouTube, like I, I feel like like a ghost head. You can like just see my head, <laughs> like barely in this light. And it's literally it's just the light from the computer that's like allowing yeah. me to still be here, but. <laughs> um, before we wrap up, you just said the gender of your baby, which I know you've announced on TikTok, but you just slipped and said it here. Oh. So. Yeah, it's a girl, guys. <laughs> I don't think you had said it here yet. I don't think. I don't. I, I don't. I don't so. know if we talked about it last week. I don't think we did. A dream life floating girl. Yeah. So and she's going to follow in our footsteps. <laughs> oh, I love it. You can raise her with all of these tools on being herself and being authentic and having amazing confidence in who she is and what she wants and yeah. she'll be a queen she will <laughs> <laughs> you guys know what to do like and subscribe depending on what platform you're listening on and we will be back next week thank you for listening see you next time